I am so angry at this episode. You sound like me in general. Oh, You're starting out like me. I'm upset at Below Deck. They've ruined this show for me. Why? Jake has a conscience, and I'm not conscience. here for it. That's what I said. <laughs> conscience. It it it. Uh, he does have. You know, there's a book out there called The Ethical Slut. Yes. There is there is an ethical oh. there is an ethics to his sluttiness. This is not what I wanted. This is not what I signed up for, y'all. He does Jake it is, for me. Jake is supposed I don't know to, what it he's is. He's supposed to fuck Raina. He's supposed to fuck Fraser. He's supposed to fuck everybody on that boat. He's not he's all talk. And now he's not gonna fuck anyone. Yeah, because he's in he's he's really into he doesn't want to admit it, but he's really into his sl- girlfriend slash fiance. Paris. Paris. What is there for me to watch on this show now? I know. I don't think there's going to be a lot of gay stuff. They had a little bit of Captain Lee working out, but it wasn't enough. Yeah. And there's no real male eye candy, except we're going to see Jake's body all the time. If, if Wes doesn't take his shirt off, I need Wes sailing again. But the worst That's not part is, happen. I'm attracted to his personality more, and his body is secondary for me. To Wes? Yeah. I really? Need, I need... I need some kind of just big ball of meat that I can ogle. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, we don't have we it don't on really this. We don't have that. We don't have it on this. Yeah. No. Welcome to Below Dick. <laughs> Below Dick. Below Dick, everybody. Dick. This is Reality Dick. Gaze. Um, season 9, episode 11. Real quick, we want to jump in. A, um, Should late. have joined the Navy. Boy. <laughs> In the Navy. Boy. We I had... could have had a blast. <laughs> oh, I there are a good lot times. of gays in the Navy. I don't know why they're so... Come at us if you're in the they Navy. They love the water. Why gays love so... the water. <laughs> they, do, well, they do love a pool party. <laughs> why are there so many gays in the Navy? I personally think... A lot of gays in the Army, too. Y'all, Navy has the cutest outfits. I t- that's why. They have the cutest outfits. Ooh. The costumes. Ooh. I don't think they're... What are they called? Uniforms. I've I should be more respectful. Some of the hottest porn I've seen oh. have been with oh. men who start up in that na- those Navy uniforms. Navy. Those kind of like Donald Duck New looking York, ones. New York, York it's hell of a town. town. Suck my dick. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to go down. I'm going to go down. New York, New York. It's a wonderful... <laughs> That's what Gershwin meant. That's our opening number for the New York show. <laughs> should be. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, sailor suits. We're getting them now. We should get them now. We 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 will look like we won't look like two sailors. We'll look like two dumpy old women in sailor suits. Yeah, (laughs) like women in their sixties in sailor suits because they're so form fitting. We really need like if I if I'm gonna wear and same for poods. If I'm wearing a form fitting top, I'm gonna not cute. I'm gonna need a a shawl, cardigan, or jacket over it to kind of covers your middle. Covers my middle. I think that is. If, if, if one thing I could say, uh, the best thing if you have you're worried about your waist or covering your middle, or if you have a belly, um, your waist or your friends, you guys, yes, uh, a shawl or or a or nice belt, em- empire waist. You can say it that way too. I've I've uh, I I think but the other said ump here. I don't. I always heard empire waist okay. until I went to uh, North Texas and one of my friends was a costuming queen. You know our friend Sean. Yeah. I think she's in uh, New York City now, right? Yeah, I think so. Anyway. She was a vicious queen. But she was so <laughs> fucking talented at yeah. what she did. Anyway, she corrected me once in Ampere. class and said, it's Ampere, honey. <laughs> Don't say it wrong again. <laughs> okay, John. She was, a, she, 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 she was a withering queen. I know. Um, anyway, that was back in the day in North Texas where people said, you're gay, you sh- you're gay, you should date. And we went on one date and we both Shut were- up. You went on a date? Well, people were like, y'all should like, it was when we didn't really know each other. And we met and we we're like, we're friends, right? And we're like, yeah, we're <laughs> friends. <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. Wow. Wow. But anyway, ugh, Navy outfits, I'm here for it. Anyway, y'all. Where are we? 
We're talking about our link tree link, y'all. Because oh. if you go to our link tree, reality, uh, linktree.com, th- whatever, just click on the link. But that's where you can get tickets to our live show. So speaking of New York, the 27th? 28th and 29th. 28th and 29th. 27th so th- is the crappies. It's the crappies. Which we may be involved in if you're there. <laughs> if you're going, you might see us. Possibly. Possibly. We can't announce it. We can't but announce it, but uh, but we're right there. At the we're city. gonna be there. We're at the city at the same time. Uh, we're be there. Maria, Sasha, uh, Michelle. <laughs> uh, gonna be grab it out. Get over there. Grab it. Uh, anyway, crabbies. they are in a warrant show. Uh, there you go. So anyway, um, watch for no, Didn't hear from us, um, but uh, yeah. So get your link tree links there, and then we'll be having our Los Angeles show. I've had a couple of people message 27th. me. Twenty seventh, twenty seventh. They're very excited about that, and then we'll yeah. we have other shows coming. Boston, Philly. Look on the link tree links. Atlanta, Boston. See when we're Boston. coming. DC. See when we're, see when we're coming to your city. Anything else, Poots? No. I don't think that's it. Hey, <laughs> leave a review. We appreciate that. I feel like I'm, we're missing something. Yeah, I'm, I, you were saying that, and I think I feel like we are. Uh, oh well, we have a charity this week for charity this this month for the Sissy Squad is called Modest Needs. Yeah. Um. So if you're in our Facebook group, the Sissy Squad, you can donate on, under those the saved posts. I believe. I think we raised about six hundred dollars right now. I really yeah. would like to raise it, but they take close care 2, of two thousand. They so. take care of you know. It's not like one of those. The charity says they're 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 there for for people who are having modest needs. You may be late on one bill. Think about know. it, y'all. You overspent over the holidays because little little Susie, she just wanted that Polly Playhouse, and you said, <laughs> "Well, this is gonna be little Susie's last Christmas, so we better give it to her." <laughs> Guess we don't need lights don't, this month. Don't need lights this month, Harold. So you buy little Susie, and then you come. And your lights j- get cut out January because you didn't know there was gonna be a snowstorm, and your heat bills more than you thought it would. Yep. And you just need someone to help just you just a little builds bit. Builds up. You've missed that heat bill once, and then soon, as soon as, you, boy, the, before you know it, Arizona heat and water, they're coming at you. <laughs> and like me, you you get to a point where you've missed two or three bills, and you have to sell your body. Well, or you just realize <laughs> it's Tuesday, and you want to sell your body. That's fine, too. Get yours. But that's what Modest Needs does. They give people just a little help, a little step up, just to help them in those moments yeah. where they need help most. If you're not in the Facebook group, you can just go to Modest Needs. Just search Modest Needs. I think it's modestneeds.org. I think, I think so, so too. Just donate. You don't have to put our name in. Just cause they give them money. They're a great give charity. Give them money. Or if you buy merch on the merch store, that'll be it. Now, look, some of you keep asking. You're seeing people wearing a black shirt that says KGQ with, with a little a crown. crown. Or you're seeing this kind of gray shirt with like a cartoon tattoo drawing a poodle knife. Two clowns. Two clowns. <laughs> and you're asking where you can buy those. Those are exclusively sold just at the live shows. Those are two those, only merch. Those are where we're hauling those around in fucking duffel bags. Those for are those y'all. fucking duffel bags. <laughs> so um, that my chiropractor said, "What did you do here?" Yeah, exactly. For Which is why those do- proceeds don't go to charity. No, we're fucking that's hauling my them blood, around. sweat, and tears. It is, but God. Damn it. If you see those shirts, that's where they are. So you can get one at a live show. Or if you're not going to a live show, ask Sissy. You can get them in men's fits or women's fits. Whatever you want. Ask you and the Sissy who's ask going sissy to the live show. who's going to the show, yeah. I'm we confused. had some Sissies. They asked a Sissy to buy them a shirt. That, okay, say that again. Are you, I wasn't clear. Yeah. You can ask a Sissy to buy you a shirt yes. when they go to the live show. Yes. Sorry, it's a lot of S. Y'all had Invisalign, so I sound <laughs> weird now. And Poodle's uh, got to deal with Invisalign. Worse. It's worse. He's got to deal with Invisalign me for about six months. Six, six months. months. <laughs> I sound like Heather. Six months out, out of, of every, every year. year. Six months. Um, but I won't keep biting my lip because my teeth aren't jutting out anymore. That was happening? Starting to, I would bite my bottom lip because my teeth were moving. Like a bulldog? Poodle needs it, too, and he won't admit it because he said, he said, something made me sad. He said, what if I'm not clear? I said, you will be no, clear. People will be fine. Invisalign. I'm worried that I'll sound like you do. It's fine. Just, it'll, I bet it would only be for like four months. Month. But just do skin it. The skin. What if I sound like skin, 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 skin the thin? thin. <laughs> hey, by the way, we're going to talk about this on her episode, but her mother Her passed mom just away. passed. So we are sending her some love because... Oh, being BGL version two, BGL yeah. version two. I think that actually is it. Now we should jump All in. Right. Where are we? Okay, yeah. Hey, nine minutes. It's not too not bad. bad. Not, not bad. bad. Not bad. Not bad. 
Not bad. Pianima. Pianima. <laughs> Pianima. All right. Um, Poodle, I started the show on a rant. So what's your first? They, but it was because they did not thing. fuck. Let's just be clear. They Even though it looked they like they were naked. Um, it did. They were naked. They did a lot and of other things. And they were writhing. I, y'all, Their bodies were writhing. writhing. She definitely felt of his dick. She and did. And he put a finger in her cooch. Yep. That happened. That happened. Um, that happened. I want to just say that... Uh, one of my favorite thing that happens later too is that they're referring to charter guests by limited dairy and shellfish allergy, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I will only know them as. And then shellfish allergy uh, shellfish just says allergy. this: mm-hmm. limited dairy is having none of it. <laughs> limited dairy is upset. limited dairy is pissed. Pissed. It just sounds like things like, and then handicap parking lot, her handicap parking spot just went off the rails. Went off the rails. <laughs> I enjoy referring to people as just that. Yeah. Did you see how red gluten free's face got? <laughs> anyway, yes, uh, we're, we're going to talk about the the charter guests. Poor Rachel, she thought this was in a be, minute, y'all. Because remember last episode, she had a blend or charter. She had to blend that woman's food and. Honestly, this this was a misfire for that for that dinner, but it was mostly Heather's fault, and it does happen. Um, I I couldn't I, I I was later on we would read that oh she didn't see lactose intolerant, but the husband was limited dairy, and the woman had a shellfish allergy. Mm-hmm. Um, shellfish allergy was kind of fine though. Shellfish well, they allergy s- said a severe shellfish yeah. allergy, so I think. Y'all, people can like close but up no, their throats. But no, she saw it. She's more. like, "Oh, I want to eat it." And they brought her chicken. Yeah. Um. But y'all, Mrs. Mrs. Limited Dairy. Okay that that is one of my notes. Her name was Melissa. Oh, I no, she's Mrs. Limited Dairy to she, me. <laughs> she <laughs> is a high maintenance. Ooh. Oh. I I would hate. To be employed by this woman. Can I can I just say one to thing? To be her employee, y'all. If you're having a crappy dinner, and if you're and if you're if, if something doesn't if something doesn't sit right, like if, let's say your meal's been fucked up. Yes, here I'm jumping to my notes on this. Don't too. don't ruin the dinner for everybody. No, you sh- kind of made everyone really uncomfortable at your table. You kind of put a downer on the whole dinner because you didn't get what you wanted. Yeah, and the thing that she said, even she could have said, "It's not that you can't voice your get it." You are paying money. However, what do we say the deal they get on these charters because they, it's almost it's very very cheap, and then you have to leave the tip. Yeah, and so it's not as if y'all, and I'm sure the producers, but want them, but you know she. Um, the she called Heather over and she said, "I am disappointed. Um, I'm very disappointed. This I wanted us to all leave together." And then later, Rachel. This is jumping way ahead in the episode, but we're tea bags, so we can do but, what we want. But, but yeah, Rachel Rachel's makes like making light of it. She's having fun. But Rachel makes food. But you notice that they brought more food out, and Melissa said, "Oh, I'm good." I'm done for that's, the night. That's the thing. It that and she's rolling her eyes like an just, adult Raina. Just be gracious. Be I'm, be it's you guys. You don't have to. You don't have to bite. You don't have to bite your lip and not say anything. But when someone goes out of their way to fix a mistake, mm-hmm. be gracious. It's nouveau riche. That's what it is. I just. I was. I was pretty appalled by that. It and even when gross. they said on dessert, she went no, no. And Rachel. When Rachel went up, and Rachel was being funny. Yeah. Everybody else was laughing. Did you see her sitting there, arms crossed, yes. just rolling her well, eyes? There's no reason on a Gross. on a on a mega yacht. A mega, mega yacht! yacht. On a mega yacht, even if something gets a dietary thing wrong, you've got your food now. You're not. You're alive. You've got two arms and you've got two legs and you're breathing. Like I can understand a little bit the woman whose mouth was wired shut and she was crying. Just I'd because, be pissed for that. Yeah, because she was like, she that was disappointment. They planned yeah. this trip. She probably watches the show. She was so excited, but you know, she sucked her husband's dick too long and broke her jaw. <laughs> but but you know, no, she's blaming she, him. She was emotionally overcome, but she was trying to rally. Rally. This woman can't be bothered. And worse, worse than that, she destroyed everyone else's dinner. Hashtag That's the worst thing. Not Southern. What Hashtag. would, because what would, you know, we know some people on this show, especially some women that we hear about that voice their opinions. What would Mother Poodle have done? 
Um, <laughs> you know what she would have done? She would have tried because she the last thing she wants anyone to say that she's difficult, <laughs> even though that, she's very difficult. That is her worst fear in life. Yeah, she that would that would bring it to her. First of all, she would. She'd probably eat shellfish, even though if they brought it. It's fine. I have an allergy. I'm fine. It's not that bad. She, she'd be going, oh, I'm fine. It's fine. If I got an EpiPen. <laughs> I mean, don't, don't, don't waste your time. If you got it, Mysterio, give me an EpiPen, please. Go. Go. And she would have done that. Or if something would have been, what would have pissed her off more is if they would have brought her what she hates water with ice in it. I don't know why. <laughs> what? Cold wait, water bothers hey, wait, wait, her. Wait a minute. You know, I don't love cold water water either. I prefer room temperature. However, hates it. Hates water with ice in it. It sh- but she gets pissed off when people bring her. No, like she tells them if they do, don't do it wrong. Oh. She's like, but she'll say she'll say I asked for it with no ice like three times. Because y'all, in Mother Poodle's world, if you talk through your teeth, they can't hear you. They, but Which I do. I've too. been around Mother Poodle, and I've been around Jake. Both of them don't know how to whisper. No, we don't. Now, I would say we, we, we would handle things much the same way. I would I would act like I wasn't bothered. I'd walk over from that table, and I'd be annoyed as shit. But you know what? No one in the table would know I wasn't having a great time. Would you say something maybe after dinner yes. to them? Yes. Yes. Like the other woman from, was it Below Deck Med, who we said was a little high maintenance, we thought, but then actually she went down afterwards and said, that was great, but this part, da 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 Yeah, kinda, yeah, yeah. That, but this this is just... It's it, childish behavior. It's also the, the, the producers and the camera people were like, we've got a live one. We've and got a live one. every time they had a camera, yeah. because they she's the asshole, and they knew it. Anyway, Ooh, there's a there's a guy on this. I think his name was German. Whoa, he was cute. I thought the Whoa. primary was cute. Yeah, he's cute too. Um, Mainly because you just knew he was in the navy and you were thinking about. And when he cute. said "commission to come aboard, Captain," that did something to me. That was Poodle's pe- bedroom password for 2017. <laughs> Permission to come aboard, <sighs> and then comb my face. Okay. <sighs> wow. What's your next one? Mine Mine was mostly about that woman, though. Mine was, let's talk about Fraser. Fraser is... Oh, she is upset. She is pissy. She is running around like a wet cat, y'all. Just a wet, dirty cat. (coughs) There's Cats are so mad when they are wet and dirty. They're just shaking their legs, Uh trying to shake that water off. And that is, uh, that's what uh, Fraser, he just says, I'm feeling really bummed and deflated because... Heather tells everybody in the crew that Kaylee will be joining them, her friend. Yeah. And what he's more upset is that she knows, Heather knows Kaylee. She's known her for like eight months. And his, he goes, worst case scenario right away, that yeah. he, that he won't, he will look, he won't, he won't look as, uh, comp, uh, as, what am I trying to say? He won't look as, uh. As competent. Because, yes, because, because she... Fraser bitched about her, but he actually liked Jess being on the boat. Yeah. Because when Jessica was on the boat, she was so horrible at her job. Right. It made him look great. Right. Remember when Jessica left and didn't say bye to fucking anyone? <laughs> I have a hard time in remembering Jess. I wonder if she'll even come to the reunion. I don't know. I don't know if she, she kind of wanted to say peace out to them all. I would be surprised if she does. I don't think she liked anyone. No! I don't think she, she liked kind any of, this. of liked Wes, but really not really. Yeah, God, she was boring. She was awful. Let's hope Kaylee brings some spice. Now they kind of need it. I'll be honest. So, so Fraser, but Fraser even says, "I feel threatened," and he said, he even goes on and says, "Well, he's and he's talking to I think Raina, and of course Raina." Is not helping. Raina's putting all her like, well, we're doing fine the way we well, are. No, she likes to inflame tensions. Yo, she's inflaming. Always. And I'm like, bitch, you're the one that's having to help in the kitchen, and which you shouldn't be yep. doing. You just like helping in the kitchen because you don't want to do your other job. Yeah. And you keep so and you like Rachel. Yeah. For now, because she's the one person that like you haven't had a beef with or tried to fuck. Yeah. Anyway, and so she's egging him on. Heather fucking hears them. Yeah. And she's like standing. I kind of loved this. I did too. She was like, well, what do you want me to do? It's help or no what help. You, it's help or no help. We're running around. And she is, she's just like, I'm fucking fed up with this. 
kind of as she should be. But what got me, I'm surprised that Frazier knows why he's doing this. He knows it's all yeah, yeah. about his it, voice it, in his head. It's insecurity. It's Telling extreme he's insecurity. Not I also think he's one of these people who he's good reality TV in that he can source it in the moment, but he can't really dispel the feelings. Which um, makes good reality. That's in, it, that's really, I, I try to be, but I get very impatient when people know why they're doing something. Yeah. And then yet they're still going to just totally enact I that behavior. I can, but I can understand it because in, in moments, especially people with really high anxiety, there's you even if you know the tools, there's just no way to get out of it. Yeah, you're in. You're just in a loop. Um, it I, takes a lot of work. And also, know that being on a boat like that is such high stress. It is, and so it's hard to even have a moment to process any of that. That's why. That's, true. that's why we have so many fights on the boats. Oh yeah, it's, it's the definition of a pressure cooker. Yeah. A crucible, if you a will. A crucible. Anyway, that's mine. Crucible. Fraser is freaking out. And I will say, at the end, we're about halfway through the, the episode, she says, well, you're going to be my right hand. She was smart. She oh, said, this was smart. Thank you said, for this part. Yeah. You know. This is good leadership. Like, Use that second stripe you got there. She's like, you're a second and, student. Well, you know, I'm excited for you. Heather, to get to- Heather was complaining to Rachel. She's like, I'm, I don't know what's going to happen with Fraser and everyone's having a problem. She, and, and Rachel said, be an HOD and head of apartment. That was the best advice Rachel gave her. And she went, I'm going to need you to step up and be a leader and be a second stew and show you're my right-hand person on this. You're blah, blah, blah. And he's like, okay, you validated me. Yes. And that is a very below-deck way, especially for a manager to handle the situation. Yes. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. And that was smart. Yeah, smart because Fraser is just that. He is just that. Because, you know, he's a little older now, but he probably just goes back to that night. 19- he's a little gay boy who could not kick yes, a soccer ball. Yes, he could not kick a soccer ball. That 19-year-old twink in the middle of a bukkake who just wanted to catch everyone's semen. <laughs> wow. Just was hoping. <laughs> Somebody loved me. <laughs> I'm trying to make some semen <laughs> soccer ball, don't touch it with your hands joke. <laughs> Well, you can't use your hands if you're in a bukkake. That's true. It's just mouth open. Okay, here you go. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you know when you called it buck cake? <laughs> didn't call it buck cake. <laughs> he said that, y'all, on a show and went, you know, like when you're in a buck cake. <laughs> and I went, what must I say? And I look, the way I look, the, my face just goes, What? And and he said, like, you know, a buck cake when everyone it, like comes on you. And I'm like, you mean bukkake or bukkake? <laughs> like it's a Japanese word, I believe. I believe so. Yeah. Bukake. Anyway, y'all. On that note, we're gonna take a commercial break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> bukkake pause. We're back. We're and back. I need to talk about something very important. Oh no. They got a Domino's fucking pizza. They did. And it looked delicious. And I want to say this. To me, this may get me hate for this. Uh It's not good pizza. Domino's is not good. Domino's is like, I'm beat down and need help pizza. It's better than it used to be. That's true. It is. But it's not like, I'm sure that could have been better pizza they could have found around there. Maybe, maybe not. But I want to say why they got it. And this is why it's familiar. So food that you haven't had in a while that that reminds you of home or how many times did you eat McDonald's in China? A lot. <laughs> and guess what? There's also the biggest chain in, in in China for pizza is Pizza Hut, and it's a nice restaurant. They have you can order all types of foods. Oh, really? And going to Pizza Hut was a big deal. Really? And it felt so special, and it was better. The, the pizza, the food, the pizza the was pizza much was better. better. Mm-hmm. Felt like a real restaurant. Did you actually ever eat any like authentic Chinese food or just Pizza Hut and McDonald's? <laughs> yes, I ate Chinese food <laughs> all the time. Otherwise, it was all Chinese food all the time. Breakfast Chinese food, lunch Chinese food, <laughs> dinner Chinese food. I think probably some tourists thought that like they would go to breakfast and they would have yogurt, like eggs or something, eggs and yogurt, and they don't, and they realized that's an American breakfast. Yeah. Because what do they eat in China for breakfast? 
uh, sautéed vegetables, uh, rice porridge, um, so, buns. So is it a very savory breakfast? Yeah. Which we're not used to. No. Wow. No. It's there. It's a very simple breakfast, but like sometimes some hotels would have American style breakfast. Do they do breakfast, lunch, dinner, or is it different times? Like, do they do like what Italians do? Like, do they eat late, or or was it the same kind of time line of that we kind of you know? yeah? But um, like uh, that's the thing we think of Chinese food is like one th- kind of a monolith. But it's all Chinese food. It's what they eat. Did somebody like please noodles tell or... me somebody on your tour was hoping they had a Panda Express? <laughs> please <laughs> no. tell me that. There, there was. I mean, what you would get, what you would get for fast food a lot of times for fast Chinese food was you'd get like a street street meat or street not street meat but like street noodles, um, which were always good, mm-hmm. um, and with a little bit of meat in there sometimes. Uh, it was actually harder to find vegetarian and vegan places. It's very strange because, really? but they use meat in to even meat is used for flavorings. Yeah, um, and uh, but all the food almost without exception that I had, everything was great. The problems is when you tried. To, the problems were when you tried to go outside cuisines. We went. They, we had a group of people who were vegan who really wanted to go. They we heard that they had a Mexican rest Mexican oh. restaurant that had some vegan options. No, no. The Mexican food was some of the worst I've ever had. Oh uh, no! But Mm-mm. and guess who did not ever go to eat with those Portland people ever again? This queen. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> no, I will say, weirdly though, we ate at this temple, um, and it was, uh, 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 fuck, can't remember the name, but it was, um, I can't the name of the temple, but it was, they had a vegetarian banquet, and, mm. um, and that food was delicious, mm. um, but almost all the authentically Chinese food we had was delicious, mm. yeah. Does not taste like Panda Express. I no. hate to say that. You know somebody, though, probably thought that. Yeah. Probably. But uh, what was I saying? What was I talking about? Oh, the, the pizza. The anyway, pizza, that was, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your next one? We, what, we would have on a food tangent, y'all. Um, okay, so. I would highly recommend China not in a pandemic, though. Y'all, it was two years <laughs> ago. Was it two years ago today that hashtag Save Poodle was I trending, think was trending. In, the, in the Sissy Squad? <laughs> It would have been around there, yeah. No, because you came back around January 24th, 25th. Yeah, usually. I would have been, we would have been in... Because China shut down on like the 28th. In Chongqing by now. Don't speak Chinese. (laughs) Please don't start doing it. (sighs) Um, That's before we went to Jinchang, which is the very, which is the the frozen north up there. Ugh. Anyway, y'all, um, yes, if you're wondering what what happened, Poodle I was, in was in China for a, a, a Right before tour, COVID hit. Literally on December 2019. Yeah, yeah, so, and, and January. And January. You know, I, I can't even imagine. Sometimes I think, I bet Mother Poodle still has night terrors about that. Oh, I underplayed everything. I had to tell her it's fine. Don't worry. Wow, yeah. if she knew. No, she she if I told her about the idea of us of us going across the the Chinese uh country of China, almost a cross country trip in a charter bus and only stopping at uh at rest areas and getting food when we could because we were worried about covid exposure um and seeing roads roads closed, she would lose her mind. We we drove we we were in a bus for 16 hours. I remember that. Yeah. That was that was actually nuts. Traveling with Poodle, <laughs> and I, I, you know, you know, what was that movie with Scorsese? It was Scorsese, uh, Robert De Niro, Al Pacino? Uh, it was that really? It was long, long movie on Netflix. Oh, I know because I had enough the time. Don or no? No, the one, no. the fella, something, the something. I was able to watch that and other movies. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I knew it was a really long day. That's how you knew it was a really long day. And play a bunch of bus games with people. And every time we would stop, we would drink on the bus. That was the only way we, and we we were, the bus driver did not like us to drink soju on the, not soju, but um, 
Gee, what was the stuff? It was this the fermented. Uh, That's what you really didn't love is they didn't have vodka. No, it was really hard to get uh, to get liquor like that. We would have we would buy this um, kind of fermented rye stuff. It wasn't very good. Um, I can't remember the name of it now. Mm. Drink a lot of Chinese wine. Yeah. And that's been our China expert <laughs> uh, excerpt from the show today, y'all. Someone's screaming, is this not below deck? Anyway, you can go back and listen to those episodes from the beginning of... With me having great Chinese internet. If you go and listen to the beginning of 2020, <laughs> you'll hear something in our episodes, y'all. <laughs> you'll, you'll hear you something. Will hear, remember when I did the uh, I did the thing in the, in the hotel Literally, lobby? I was like, where are you? And he's like, I can do it. And I hear... <laughs> and I'm like, what the fuck is that? It was that? very Chinese. But you could hear like birds <laughs> outside my window. I said, this isn't gonna work. Anyway, okay. Well, you know what's, what's no- your next one? My next work one is y'all. Don't get bit, don't get too big for your breeches. Your be- breeches. Your breeches, because this this is a Maddie move of when I was in my 20s. If I would work somewhere or I would get comfortable. I would step out of my zone, but Heather, you volunteering Captain Lee to do Ooh. something, honey, don't do that. She, she thought it was going to be cute, I think. Captain Lee was, I loved when he was like, yeah, the next time you volunteer me for something, you might want to talk kick to your me ass. about this. Because do you think he wants to fucking marry people? No. No. He wants, you now we talked about. We talked about Captain Sandy, which, by the way, did you hear her new book is coming out? Uh, is it the one about is? Oh God, this someone someone told me what the title was. Oh, we gotta remember it. Let's see. It's, it made me want to uh, throw myself down a flight of stairs. Uh, it was so awful. Uh, her be calm or be the storm. Yes, by Captain Sandy Yawn. Be calm, be the calm, or be the storm. <sighs> it doesn't even, I get calm the storm. I get it. It doesn't really make sense. Because it's the, the, sometimes the storm is. <sighs> anyway, y'all, it's, I read that and I immediately go fall. But, um, be calm, be the calm, or be the storm. <laughs> do you know what, it, do you, you get understand what that means? Because you could either choose. In this life, we can choose to be the storm. Like we're we're like knocking things out of our way. We're like the one who was like on the X Men who could create weather. She was always very attractive. I thought very form fitting costumes, especially when she had that short hair. Yeah, loved that. <laughs> R- reminded me a lot of times of a grown up Tootie. What I thought Tootie would be. And then Kim Fields turned into something very different, very. which I also liked. <laughs> or you could also be a calm. Be be the calm. Be the calm. And I'm always calm. I'm always Unless you have a fucking vape pen, <laughs> and then I'm going to follow you around and yell at you and fire you. Yeah. <laughs> what? Now, we talk about that Captain Sandy just wanted to watch TV. What do you think, what does um, Captain Lee... Heather's asking him, you know, volunteering in one of his nights. What does Captain Lee want to do when he goes to his room at night? What do you think? Uh, you know, I think he sleeps. You think? He might read or talk to his wife mm-hmm. or read. He might read. Like, maybe Captain Lee just reads Seabiscuit over and, and over, over and, and over, over again. Yep. He just, lo- I just really like the story. That horse ran that race. <laughs> maybe. Yeah, I think Or so. just... He might read travelogues. I think Captain Lee is an interesting person. Yeah. Um, he definitely lived a lie. Or like uh, James Patterson novels. That I could see. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Or mysteries um, or... I could see him liking mysteries. Yeah. He probably likes... Um, what's his name? Dan. What's his name? Dan. Not Dan Brown. That's the... Yeah. That's the... That's the... Illuminati stuff. All men, all straight guys like his books. <laughs> all just painted straight men with a very broad brush. A lot, You're probably right. A lot of straight guys love Dan Brown books. We are. Uh, I have said many. And I think Tom Hanks is miscast I in have, that movie. You and the rest. I like yours taking a bold <laughs> stance. You're acting like 
No one else said that. I did that. read that one book because everybody was reading it. I was like, Tom Hanks is not the right person for this. How brave. You're welcome. For t- you know what? I've taken that stance because you got to That's stand like me for saying, something. You know, I've got to go out on a limb and say that Joe versus the Volcano was not the best film. I've never seen it. <laughs> I've never seen it. <laughs> anyway. Or or me saying, uh, uh, you know, I really, really didn't. I really think that uh, uh, what is what is that terrible film? I really think that Ishtar deserves a second chance. Never seen that either. Again, yeah, that's a leg- legendary bomb from the Who 80s was that? and 90s. Um, Dustin Hoffman, Hoffman and oh, shit. Somebody else released famous. This is and, so old. We need to move on. What's your next tea bag? That um, was mine. Was Heather and Captain Lee. Uh, I was going to talk about then the Captain Lee uh, thing with Captain Lee and Eddie seeing Raina's eye Wait, roll. You want to talk about eye roll? Yes. Gate? Because this is kind of the second half of this. I don't think Captain Lee had ever seen it before. So, no. Um, no, I don't think he had seen that before. And Captain Lee is... Captain Lee, Raina was walkie talking. and Raina said, well, or Captain Lee said, well, she seems in a good mood today. And Eddie said, yeah, she could be difficult. Um, and Captain's like, oh, really? And Captain said, yeah, when I Expound came down on her, that. she rolled her eyes. He said, but she apologized to me. And he said, Eddie followed that up right up with, but she does the work. She does, she does the, the work. work and and Captain Lee says, job. so just lose the attitude, right? So, yeah. So it wasn't like he totally threw her under the bus. And, um... But Captain Lee said, I can't pull another deckhand out of my ass. <laughs> so Eddie's got to work on her and make her happy. And so the next thing is he sees it. Captain Lee sees it later. So they're all basically, it happens because Eddie is filling up the jet skis. And, and y'all, Captain Lee, we, we all, that my father has done this. And I'm sure yours has, or maybe yours hasn't. But you know when you're, Y'all, bored, you know a bored dad? Like, you know, your dad, at least my, my father. My father is a bored father. My father he could needs never. He to be doing everything. Every, and my father could never take a day off. Drives what? my mother crazy. He could your when father's he, driving me crazy. It's true. He, my dad could when he got older. Kill him. But when he was younger, he was always walking around doing stuff around the house. Yeah. You know why? They, like, they can't sit with their own feelings. And yeah, and you know when you're a kid and you're like, I'm just going to do stuff on my own. I'm going to go behind the house and do color guard and no one's going to notice me. Yeah. And then your dad's just peeking over <laughs> the thing, just watching you, going, Matt, what are you doing? Uh, I'm playing rifle, daddy. The rifle? He doesn't know. Why the, you got a flag? <laughs> uh, it's all like I'm playing pretend. And is that a baton in your hand? <laughs> no, daddy, I'm playing ninja. Okay, man. Better not be twirling no faggy baton. No, I'm playing ninja, <laughs> daddy. So, um, pole vault, daddy. If he only knew. Ugh. Um, but I've vaulted many a pole. Many a pole. So, but Captain Lee, he sees all these things are adding up. He sees Wes texting on his phone. Right. He also sees a bit, and I'm not a captain on a boat, but even I, I saw them like wearing headphones and doing stuff, and yeah, I went, yeah. Is that safe? They've. They've had a problem with it before. Uh, he's Captain Lee's come down on people for it, and before. so he's seen this. So he sees Eddie filling. It up. It is a safety issue. Yeah, he sees Eddie filling up the water sports and or the water toys, and he's like, "What the fuck, Eddie? Why are you doing that?" He's like, "Eddie's like, well, I'm here, right?" And that is that is something you have to let go as a leader. I can do that. You can do that. Yeah, we Eddie, try to work Eddie, on that. Eddie still wants his crew to like him. Yeah, they want people to like you, but also we're. We op we when we've been in places of uh, authority, you're like, well, I'm here, I'll just do it. It's right. not a problem. But that's the wrong way to do it. Yep. You're not letting people give them a chance. And so he tells Eddie to let them. So apparently, it takes three people to fill up a. It's like the <laughs> it looks like the three stooges. Yes, did. it's Jake, Raina, and Wes, and and they and and it's interesting because when when Wes. When Wes shows uh, that he doesn't want to do something, it's kind of like he kind of like either sighs or something like that. But with Raina, it's very obvious because she rolls her eyes. She's like Natalie, no poker face. And yeah. so they're feeling it. And Captain, Captain Lee, I forgot, he walkie talkied something to them. Yeah. And she looked back and her response, she rolled her eyes at Captain Lee. That was a mistake, Raina. That was a mistake, Raina. 
that was amazing. And he said, yeah. if I see one more fucking eye roll, I'm going to come apart like a cheap suit. <laughs> I will say that is that is a that is a that is a problem with when in any type of service industry, if she's ever had a boss, especially in a service industry where you have a highly ranked service industry. Uh huh. It's unforgivable. You cannot do that to someone who is your like the biggest. Captain Lee is officially the king up yeah. there. And for everyone's safety, it has to be that way. I just, I, my mother would have beat the shit out of me as a kid if I, if I would roll my eyes at someone. I, I got in trouble for rolling my eyes a lot um, as a child. Because mm-hmm. um, I was emulating my mother. My mother rolled her eyes all the time. Mm. And my mother said, don't you ever roll your eyes at me. <laughs> I she, and she's like, Jacob, you better stop doing that. That's the last time you do that. You do. You, you do it. still do it, son. Oh, I like, always roll my eyes. And you're right. Your mom does, too. She, oh. <laughs> it's that Liz Lemon meme of my. the doctor told me if I rolled my eyes too hard one time, they'd actually fall out of my head. <laughs> That's what I feel like. It's always like, oh. Well, so this was not great. And so... Captain Lee, he calls Jake in and he said, tells he goes over everything. Like, get your shit together. No texting, no wearing headphones. This isn't safe. You can't hear your walkie talkies. Like they all know that they're right. on alert. So, yeah, and all the crew, they're, and they're all a little pissed off about it too. Yes, and it's so they they're all pissy about it. And then it's um it's kind of that that's one day, and then they all go to bed. And there's the next day of the chart. It's the second day of the charter. The next day, I really like this. Captain Lee calls in Eddie and says, now look, Eddie, there's always a reason for someone's behavior. I wrote this down because I wanted to get it right. Yeah. And he said, there could be something happening that you don't. And it's time that you need to find out what's going on and get ahead of it before things blow things right. out of proportion. This is my question. Captain Lee doesn't know about the Heather and Raina thing, right? No, I don't think so. That, that we know in, in the progression of the show, it does not seem he like that. He doesn't know. Because, honestly, when the Heather and Raina thing happened, Eddie should have made a report or, yep. like, told Captain Lee about it. And we don't think that that happened. No. But it should have happened. So, I don't know. That, that is either just his great insight or what. So, what they do next is they oh, – sorry. No, go I was going to say there was the thing where Eddie's talking to Raina later, like, how's it going? Yeah. And – does she, I don't know if she says this to him, but she maybe in in, in the moment she's like Ray, Eddie's talking to me like he's my dad, and I, in a way, he that's a good thing, honey. A, they, well, because, and I'll just say this about all the deck crew: Jake, Raina, and Wes. They all act like children. Yeah, they do. They're all very immature, and so. Eddie does act like a big brother or yeah. a dad to them because that is kind of the role that they've established. Yeah. But I'm saying, talk to me like my dad makes her sound 14. It does. Yeah. It does. It does. And also, it's so he's talking to her like a dad. But then, y'all, they do what this happens all the time. Uh, it's a common thing in Below Deck where someone gets like someone gets a talking to or they the, fuck they get, up on something. And they fuck up on something, and then the next episode or even in the in the same episode, they're allowed to do something to kind of redeem themselves. Redeem themselves. It's a normal arc of the story. It's every we've seen this on every scene, every, every season of Below Deck. Every season of Below Deck, we've seen this. It season. happened to Eddie earlier, or. Uh, yeah. uh, Jake earlier when Jake got to Jake fucked up and then Jake got to call the distances. I think they did it with Jess a little bit. Like she, yeah. redeemed, then she left and it's, then she fucked up. It, yeah. It's a normal, it's, it makes, it's a normal storytelling device. It makes people feel good and get connected to characters. That's okay. why we do it on reality shows. It is. And so they give, they give Eddie or they give Raina, they're having her help with anchor and, They've done this before. Captain Lee, if somebody's done a good job, they do this for the show. He calls them in and thanks them for it. He yeah. says, you did a really good job. And he tells her, that was one of the best anchor pools I've ever had. And Raina, like, she can't handle this. Yeah. She, like, leaves and she starts crying. Like, crying and she's like, I can't do the switch thing. And she says, what did she say? Well, she Jen? says that they are, they're, they're trying to play with my emotions. I don't think they are at all. No. I, I didn't see. I think they're actually trying to uplift you, right, and make you a good crew member. And I think 
go ahead. But I'm saying, wh- what is let's let's I would like to analyze what's the phrase they're trying to play with my emotions mean. What is she trying to say? She's trying to say that she's being manipulated and that she's being probably she's uh, she's saying they're being fake. Yeah, they're being fake. Yes. And do I and I don't do <clears throat> do I think if they like Raina or not? I don't know if they do or not. I wouldn't like Raina if I was on the boat no. with her because she's not really an enjoyable person to be around. No. And in fact, that's where I'm like, you know, I wonder when she said that if she means because she's talking about Heathergate and that whole thing. Yeah. I don't, but, you know, but something even, and I feel empathy for her in that, like, she did experience a very traumatic thing with that. But at the same time, Heather, or not Heather, y'all, Rain has been shitty on the boat from the beginning as far as taking authority. Yeah. Remember, because I said like the second episode. No, she was. She started being shitty after she kind of teased around with Jake. Yeah. And then Jake, like they kind of, she heard Jake had a girlfriend. And ever since then, she's just been showing her ass. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's hard. And she's, I know. Anyway, so I know she's going through that, but I just kind of, I just. I just think she's kind of an asshole to people. Yeah, in authority. and it's a dramatic, it's a dramatic move that she can't. She's she sees that gesture as it's in a in a paranoid sense of trying to make her feel even worse about something. Like she's she sees it in a what in other words she's she's thinking that there's something more behind it and there's not. There's not. I think Raina has a lot of uh, trauma, which it's very, anybody who goes through trauma, you feel, you feel horrible for them. And I think a lot of that trauma didn't happen. And we all do this. It didn't happen on this ship. No, but she's bringing it there. We all bring it there. We all bring it to these places. So these, uh, what is it? Oh man. Oh, I miss. There's a quote that, Oh fuck! It's like basically un. But what is that? Quote? Well, you, while you think of it, I want to. I just want to say that you're exactly right. When, when someone else brings their own tra- own trauma into your house or into your work environment, uh, it's that's something that is theirs. But it is a problem when they make it yours. Yes, yes and yes. their trauma. Uh, and there is, there isn't, there is a, a, a way we are living now. People are openly talking about the trauma they, they experience and the fact that they're trying to deal with their trauma and, yes. and, and it's okay to talk about that in a situation like you're being on the boat where safety is the most important. Yeah. That's not going to work. No, that's not going to work. Yeah. So, and other people's safety, crew members, safety, guest safety. And doing the work, it's the trauma is going to get in the way. And I think having, I can't remember the quote, but basically what it's saying is having this kind of irregular reaction to a regular situation, that's a trauma reaction Mm -hmm. because you're having this kind of, you're having an... uh, a heightened reaction to something that is not that at all. Yeah. So... Anyway, it kind of ends with she's crying. Everybody's kind of like, why is Raina crying? Why right. is Raina crying? Every, and everyone's like, what's going on? And we see she goes into her room. And the thing the thing that I think gets Raina more than anything and why I do, uh, I do feel for her in a lot of ways, she is the shame that binds her. She goes into these – she feels bad. And, and, and often, not always, but sometimes she has some valid – she has a valid reason for having this reaction – but then she reacts so yeah. big, then she goes in a shame spiral. Right. And then when people try to – I know what's going to happen. Eddie's going to go and talk to her. She'll say it's okay. She'll say it's okay. I hope she doesn't. I hope she actually says, I'm pissed off that I told you about Heather and nobody handled it. I right. hope she fucking says right. that. But I don't think she will. I think she'll say, it's fine. It's okay. I'm stupid. I'm being overdramatic. I'm stupid. Right. They're going to think that she's okay. And then she's going to mutter to say, herself. But you're doing a good job. You're doing a good job. And, and yeah. she's going to mutter to herself and talk bad about them and play the victim. Yeah. That's what I think is going to happen. Yeah. I hope not. Yeah. But y'all, wish in one hand. Like I said, we're, we're, we're having these conversations about race on the – race. On where in a primarily, let's face it, an environment that's been very white. Yes. 
And so obviously there's going to be places where uh, being black on this boat intersects. It's going to be intersect negatively with thing, And there are going to be ways the, the yachting has not handled these discussions. Yeah. And I said this before when we were talking, I just wish it wasn't someone like Raina that we have to have them with. <laughs> Because she's just – she's not a great employee. Yeah. And so I think those things get – you want to say, I, as a as, as a reality show person, I want to say, well, her and the Rolling Nights, it has nothing to do with the conversation about race. Right. Because that was prior to that. But then as an empathetic person, I can't imagine what she has experienced right. as a black woman in yachting. You, you, A part of you says, but it does have to do with that because yeah. of that experience. So it's a complicated issue for – Kind of a just again, just boring person. that we don't know if it really belongs on below deck. Yeah, uh, <laughs> it is. So here we are. Here we are. That's the show. That's the show. That's all I got, everybody. You can go to realitygaze.com. You can see where everything else. Go to our link tree link for our live show link. We're excited to see y'all in New York. Hey, um, be safe out there. Get vaccinated, get boosted. Um, and y'all, we appreciate you so much. We'll see you uh, next time around the ship. But until then, everybody, anchors, anchors again. again.